It's been a couple of really hard days here in the Texas aviation community with three fatal small plane crashes. Quick update on this episode of Taking Off. Hi, I'm Dan Milliken and wasn't planning on releasing a video as I'm out isolating with the extended family and not back in the studio. So forgive the lack of production value and the use of smartphones and zero lighting or good microphones. First off, I do wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. May 2021 be better for you than 2020, which probably won't be hard to accomplish. If in 12 months, the world is worse than welcome to the apocalypse. Before we get to a couple of tragedies, and now three as another small plane went down in North Texas, even as I started filming to get my thoughts out, let me just update you real quick on some other aviation news. The FAA did an emergency approval for the Moderna vaccine, and this is the second vaccine after the Pfizer. And the FAA quickly moved to implement the same rules they had established for the Pfizer. You need the same 48-hour waiting period for pilots after taking the vaccine. And not strange to California, Santa was almost electrocuted when his powered parachute got caught up in some power lines in Sacramento County. The FAA reports he lost power right after takeoff, and I guess he didn't feed his reindeer, and he hit the power lines and got tangled up. Emergency responders were able to shut off the power and rescue Santa. It's reported that the powered parachute pilot was giving candy canes away to the children in the community. Thankfully, no injuries occurred. Okay. So, North Texas had three GA airplane fatalities in the last few days, and we'll start with the second one first. On Saturday, December 19th, 85-year-old Earl Kirkpatrick finally finished his seven-year project, a Sonics kit plane. And to keep in the air, Kirkpatrick also had a Mooney, which he'd hangered with the Sonics south of Fort Worth at Spinks Airport. On Saturday, it was time for his very first flight in the Sonics. He gave a handheld radio to his son, Forrest, so he could listen to the tower. His son reports Earl was very excited. After taking off, Earl reported engine trouble. Here's the audio. Experimental five echo kilo. Uh, do you require any assistance, sir? Uh, I believe I'm returning to the airport. I'm not climbing. Experimental five echo kilo, Roger. Do you want to land? Experimental five echo kilo, Roger. Runway three five left. Clear to land. You can proceed direct to the runway. 935 Echo Kilo, thank you. 935 Echo Kilo, I've got a sick engine. I don't know if I can make the field. 35 Echo Kilo, roger. Uh, the wind is 330 at 8. You are cleared to land, runway 35 left, and uh, just say your intentions. Roger, I'm uh, trying to make the field. Yes, sir, it appears that you have some smoke coming out of the engine. Thank you. When his son heard he might not make it back to the airport, Forrest took off to try to find him. Kirkpatrick crashed in a parking lot, just a little over a mile short of the runway. First responders pronounced him dead at the scene. The plane was upside down with a broken power line nearby, so it's not clear if he stalled or if he clipped the wires trying to land. Earl Kirkpatrick was very involved in helping other people, giving young eagles flights and well-known in the community. He was a Marine and had been a chaplain in the Marine Corps League and in 2019 was named the Regional Marine of the Year. He still worked at the engineering firm he built more than 20 years before. Then, on Monday, December 21st, two people were killed when they took off from Grand Prairie Airport, and that's just south of DFW Airport. It's where I did my instrument training. And when their plane hit a utility pole and consequently a pickup truck, it crashed, burst into flames. The truck passenger was taken to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The aircraft was a four-seater experimental from Blue Moon Express. No other information right now, and we're not going to speculate. With this and the Sonics accident, what we can take away as pilots, we've got to put that nose down on engine outs. We've got to get to our best glide speed. We don't know on these crashes if they stalled, but we do know on many recent airplane fatal crashes, what's happening is people are stalling when they get low and slow, and that'll get you and others killed. So we can take this away as a reminder. Fly the plane all the way through to the crash location. Don't let it just fall. Even if it's 20 feet, I mean, imagine falling off a two-story building that's moving 50 miles per hour. 
you probably won't survive. Your best chance, even if you can't make the runway, is to fly the plane all the way down. Don't stall it. I don't know how often I can repeat it and train it. Know what your best glide speed is or your minimum maneuver speed for any and all airplanes you fly. And don't let your speed drop below that. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna talk about is a harder one and hopefully I can get through this one. It's one thing to investigate these accidents and evaluate to learn what we can take away to make us better pilots and better people. And this one, I knew the pilot. I happened to have landed at his field right before he took off on December 17th. I waved to him as he did a run-up of his extra 300 acrobatic plane. My mechanic, John Effinger, a good friend of Mike Shriver, John and I watched him form up with an RV pilot who was getting some quick formation flying instruction from Mike that late afternoon before Mike went off to work on a list of acrobatics he was practicing. They headed out north, and I didn't know that that was the last time I'd see Mike alive. Mike was a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force Reserves, flying the A-10 Warthog, and with his big hulking frame, his handle was Yeti. Mike invited Christy and I to go to the base and go through the Warthog's simulators. With the pandemic, I kept pushing that off, but every time we talked, he renewed the invitation. He, he was the friendliest guy you'd ever meet. We also talked about a flight in his extra 300 where he'd see if he could make me throw up. And as John and I turned around from watching Mike depart, we talked about that upcoming flight and John confessed that Mike had laughed at me for that one. He talked about how they used to take new trainees up in T-38s way up and do spirals and spins to see if they could get sick. Mike was working on some maneuvers and we don't know what happened. The plane was found crashed in a field. We'll wait for the NTSB investigation and resist the urge to speculate. I know with this one, even more than many others, I want to know why. I woke up in the middle of the night last night wrestling with why did my crash? But that answer will have to wait and possibly never be answered. Mike leaves behind a wife, three children, and I'm working on finding out if there's any GoFundMe or charitable channel to send any support. And I'll post links if I find something. And it looks like there will be a celebration of Mike's life on January 9th at the Borland Field. That's 50 Foxtrot. And I'll post more details as they become available on that. Mike, we're gonna miss you. Blue skies, my friend. For the rest of you, fly safe, please. And remember, superior judgment Trump's superior skills. Take care.